contest consisting of four rounds of action in the featherweight division is brought to you by the Beard Brothers Collective, sponsored by Jack Daniels, Everlast, the choice of champions, and HerbAngels.ca. Your three judges sitting at ringside to score this contest are Alan Davis, Jeremy Hayes, and Martin Dalladow. Referee in charge of the ring, Robert Bender. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing red trunks. He did the scale at 122.6 pounds. He is appearing tonight in his first professional bout. Please welcome from Etobicoke, Ontario, Kaya Soltanya! Across the ring, his opponent fights out of the blue corner. He wears gold or white with the gold trim. His official weight, 123.6 pounds. He's also making his professional debut tonight. He is from Oakville, Ontario. Introducing Ross Marlin. Once again, referee Robert Bender. Welcome to the Danforth Music Hall, where Lee Baxter Promotions presents Light 'em Up, six rounds, six fights. Coming at you, professional boxing. Our first bout of the evening. Two young fighters making their professional debuts. We have Ross Milet in the white and gold trunks, taking on Fayaz Sultanyar in the red and white trunks. Four rounds of featherweight action. Here we go. Of course, with two fighters making their professional debuts, there must be a lot of nerves in the ring right now. But we start early with Milet landing a right hand. Milet aggressive here in the first minute of the first round. We have a classic Southpaw versus Orthodox fight. The right hand will be valuable for Milet, and the left hand will be valuable for Sotanyar. Lands the shot to the body, does Sultan Yar. A jab from Milet to the body, goes upstairs with a hook. Nice body shots landed by Fayaz, but Milet is trying to throw in the middle of his punches and landing. Milet, nice left hook to the body, nice left hook upstairs. Looking good in the first round. Both fighters exchanging. Sultanya looks hurt. A right hand landed by Milet. A solid first round start for Milet. Nice double jab lands for Fayaz. Ross Milet looking like he's seeking a counter. There he goes for the right hand. Another right hand lands. And another right hand. Good action. Already swelling on the left eye of Ross. Fast start to the feel out round here in the first, but of course they only have four rounds, so they have to put it all on the line early. Not too many effective punches landed here for both fighters, but good action. Both guys trying to out wrestle each other here. Ooh, nice left hook for Ross. Nice jab following that left hook. Goes for another jab, slips under his counter. Ross really pu pushing his will here. 10 seconds left in the first round. A good round for Ross Milet. Nice right hand lands for Ross, but Fayez does not look phased at all.
scheduled for four in the featherweight division. Ross, an impactful first round. Nice jab to the body by Ross to start. Nice right hand for Ross. You can notice he's throwing a lot of left hooks, but he's not necessarily putting his full body weight in them. Nice right hand lands there for Fayaz, who's actually fighting as an orthodox fighter here in the second round, maybe adjusting a little bit of the strategy. Nice jab for Ross. Nice jab again for Ross, really finding a home for that jab. Both fighters roughing each other up. Fayaz getting the better of it here as the referee breaks it up. Fayaz needs to pick up the pace. Lands a couple of effective body shots, but he's not finding the head. Still in the orthodox stance here in the second round. Feints, throws a left hook, misses. Ross now looking comfortable on the ropes. Looking for counters. Fayaz continues to go to the body here. Tries to go upstairs. Now back in the, in the southpaw stance. Looking for that right hook. There he threw it but missed as Ross landed his right hand. Ross commanding the second round. Although Fayaz is the aggressor, he's not landing any effective punches. Ross continues to throw jabs, one-twos, landing some, missing others, but Fayez is not necessarily putting up any effective counters here. There's a one-two lands for Ross. Nice hook to the body there by Fayez as Ross moves out the way. Goes for that hook again and again. There he lands a right hook to the Fawadi. Keeps going to the Fawadi. Oh, a nice left hook for Ross. Both fighters are going at it here in the second round. Good action in our first fight of the night. Ross goes for another one, too. Fayez tries to counter that other one, too. Another jab, another one, too. Hook, body shots, body shots, hooks. Oh, it's good action here. It's good action. One, two lands for Ross. Hard right hand. As Fayez counters, going to the body, backs him up. Oh, good second round. Solid action. Both fighters in the Ross comes out hard, swinging one twos and left hooks. Another left hook, a right hand lands, one two lands. Ross really coming out strong here in this third round. Jabs landing, one two lands, hard right hand. Fayez needs some head movement. There's another right hand. There's a left hook. Head movement shown by Ross, but not by Fayez. Good defense, good counter there with the right hand. He's seeing what's coming at him and he's responding well. Another right hand, left hook. Real composure shown here by Ross in his professional debut. 
We might not be noticing all of the intricacies, but he's rolling with punches. He's showing us a little bit of shoulder roll, some head movement, some body movement. Good footwork, trying to counter. Nice left hook lands for him. Fayez needs to do something different in here. His punches are being smothered. He looks frustrated. There he misses wildly. Good defense shown by Ross. Really commanding the third round as he did the first and second. Needs to keep up this pace. Fayez, mouth open, breathing hard. Ross should go to the body. Keep at it. There's another jab. While Fayez is the aggressor pushing forward and trying to move Ross into the ropes, he's not necessarily doing it very effectively. He's not jabbing it. There's a nice right hook counter by Fayez as he was backing up as opposed to moving forward. There's a right hand by Ross followed by a left hook. Good action in the third round, body shots. Nice jab by Ross, continues to dish out punishment. Ross looking focused, eyes on the target. Beating him to the punch with a nice right hand. Fayez's jab looks lazy now. The ref stops it, calls time. Not sure what the time was called for. Oh, it's his shoelaces. Needs to be tied. Action should resume momentarily. Here we go as we resume the third round. Nice body shot by Ross as he also got countered at the same time. Fayez missing the one-two to the body. Ross hooked to the body. Nice head movement by Ross, followed by a jab, followed by a one-two that shakes Fayez. Another right hand. He's finding a real hope for that right hand here tonight, landing several punishing right hands, and there's another. He needs to stay. this fight here we go round four of four featherweight action both fighters in the middle of the ring Ross both hands up looking attentive Fayaz pawing with the jab nice right lands for Ross followed by a hook another right hand for Ross Fayaz goes to the body there folks this is bout number one of six here at the Danforth Music Hall. And we've already got a full packed theater to the rafters. Very rare in boxing these days. But the fans are here for all the fights. And the first fight has already delivered. There's a right, nice right hand for Ross. Body shots for Fayez, but no torque. Oh, there's a hook for Fayez landing. Goes fouls with another hook. And looking to find a home in between Ross's gloves. Ross goes for the right hand, followed by a jab. Nice body shot for Ross. Fayez going to the body. He needs a miracle here to win this fight. Both fighters making their debut in front of a sold out crowd. Body shot by Ross. Ross really conserving his energy well. 
using his footwork effectively to get in and out of positions, but not necessarily moving for no reason. There's a right hand, followed by a push. It did hurt Fayez, but he did push him. Nice right hand for Ross. Fayez is a tough, tough customer. These fighters are giving it their all here in their professional debuts in the last round. Both fighters really want the victory. Nice right hand counter by Ross as Fayez was throwing some lazy one twos. Getting punished. As round four nears the close here. Nice right hand glance for Ross. Really commanding all four rounds. Showing us some head movements. There's another right hand. You got to give it to Fayaz. He's taking some punishment here, but he does not look phased. He looks like he's ready to go another four or five rounds. There's another right for Ross, but not necessarily too much power on that one. Nice body shots by Fayaz. You can hear it here at ringside. There's the jab. Fighting this round in the southpaw. He's been switching back and forth, trying to find any solution to the problem in front of him. Last 10 seconds of the fourth round. Both fighters continue to punch. No one is stopping. And I don't I have a feeling they won't stop until the bell goes. There it is. Fight number one in the books. Ross Milet, Faliaz Sultan Yar. What a fight. Great fight. Judge sees it a draw. And Delita both score this matchup 39 to 37, both in favor of the winner by majority decision. Ross Milet. Ross Milet is now 1 0 in his professional debut. Victorious. One judge had it 38 38, a draw. Questionable, questionable scorecard there. The other two judges had it 39 to 37, seeing it three to one for Ross. I personally had it four to nothing, 40 to 36. A majority decision for Ross Milet.
Harry Davis, Jasper Kijowski, and Martin Delida. The referee in charge of the ring, Mr. Mark Simmons. Introducing first buddy on the blue corner. She's wearing camouflage. She tipped the scale at 116.4 pounds. Her professional record stands at three victories, one defeat. Introducing the Aguas Valiente Mexico, Guadalupe Pantarita. Across the ring, her opponent fights out of the red corner. She's wearing purple with the black and leopard trim. Her official weight, 180 pounds even. She is undefeated in three professional battles with a perfect three victories. Introducing from Toronto, Ontario, Machine Gun Shelley. Here we go, six rounds of action in the bantamweight division. Shelly Barnett from Toronto, Canada in the purple, gold and black. Guadalupe Rodriguez out of Mexico in the camouflage trunks. This is going to be a good fight. Shelly's an undefeated fighter at 3-0. But she's never faced anyone of the caliber of Rodriguez, who has seven professional fights, four professional fights rather, but has faced good competition. She starts, Rodriguez does, with fast hands. Shelly's jab looking slow. Another advantage Rodriguez has is the 10 year age advantage, 24 years old, against Shelly, who's 34. Rodriguez showing real length here. Long arms, using them effectively, landing uppercuts, landing body shots. But you can tell Shelly's a tough customer. Moving forward, putting her head down into the chest of Rodriguez and looking for some shots. Rodriguez landing some effective punches to the body, to the head. Shelly lands a good jab, gets countered there with that uppercut as Rodriguez using much better footwork to get around the ring. Tries an uppercut, gets blocked by Shelly. Shelly is the shorter fighter. She's got the shorter arm length. She's got to find a way to get on the inside. There she finds a nice left hook, does Shelly. While Rodriguez throwing back punches, landing right hands, hard right hands. Good action here. They came to fight here in the Danforth Music Hall. Lee Baxter Promotions light them up too. They're really lighting each other up here in the first round. 10 seconds left. Of course, a female fight is two minute rounds, not three minutes as we are accustomed to with the males. She looks confident. Both fighters meet in the middle of the ring. Rodriguez throwing jabs, four in a row. Another jab as she backs up, landing that one. Right hand over the top misses. Shelly lands a couple of punches. Good, fast action. Right hand lands for Shelly. Now she's finding herself on the inside. Both fighters throwing lots of punches. Shelly finding some success here in the second round. Rodriguez goes for a wild uppercut counter that doesn't land. Oh, 
Rodriguez keeping her punches really straight, which is not necessarily what you want to do when you're in fighting. That's a good advantage for Shelly. She's got to stay on the inside, where Rodriguez's long arms become a disadvantage. Right hand lands for Barnett. Another right hand lands for Barnett. Uppercut lands for Rodriguez. Barnett backs up Rodriguez. Barnett really finding more success here in the second round, putting up a better pace, more effective aggression. Rodriguez's long punches aren't finding the target like they were in the first round. There's a right hand for Rodriguez. Shelly really bullying Rodriguez in that in this second round. Nice combination there for Shelly Barnett. We said she has to go and get on the inside. There she landed right hand when she found herself inside. Gets her on the ropes. Goes to the body. Goes upstairs. Shelly really finding success here in the second round. Good round for Shelly Barnett. Round three of six, Shelly Barnett, Guadalupe Rodriguez, women's bantamweight division. Shelly Barnett finding success in that second round. Rodriguez got the better of her in the first. I have it tied 1-1 going into the third. Both fighters throwing a lot of punches. Rodriguez staying busy, but not necessarily landing. There you see her missing. Shelly doing a good job keeping her on the ropes, on the outside of the ring, not letting Rodriguez stay in the middle and keep her distance. There's uppercuts for Shelly. Another uppercut, right hand lands for Shelly. Gaining a lot of confidence after that second round. Another one, two. Shelly finds an uppercut in the middle, close to the body. Rodriguez acting like it's not effective, but it is. Here we go. Action is picking up. Rodriguez goes to the body. Shelly jabs, misses, but lands the right hand. Really commanding this third round. Best round for any of them so far. We knew she had to get on the inside to find success. She's getting on the inside. There she blocks her Rodriguez's attempted body punches. Lands more punches to the body. There we go, body shot. Rodriguez lands a counter uppercut, followed by a right hand from Barnett. Rodriguez punches looking more sloppy. They were looking really good in the first round. Look at that sloppy one-two, missing the target. Rodriguez has to use some footwork, use some jabs. She can't fight at this pace, at this distance. Shelly taking the third round. Up 2-1 after this round on my score. Here we go, round four of six. Shelly Barnett finds a right hand early. Gets her back onto the ropes. Doing exactly what she needs to do, but Rodriguez throwing hard, vicious counters. Both fighters really going for it here in the fourth round. Sustained action. The fists are flying. This is our third fight of the evening, and each fight has been spectacular thus far. Rodriguez not able to find her way off those ropes. Keeps getting bullied. There she turns around. There she uses her footwork. She needs more of that. She needs to use her jab. She needs to keep some distance. Here she finds herself in a corner. Will she move out of the way? There she does. There's the jab. She needs more of that. There's the one too. She needs to move now again. Don't find yourself in that corner. Wisely moves out. There she goes, showing us some good footwork, confusing Shelly Barnett, who was really bullying her in the second and third. 
There, Rodriguez takes a back step, followed by an uppercut counter. Good footwork here by Rodriguez. Much more composed in the fourth round. See, as she's in the middle now, she's more circling, not just standing there and waiting for Shelly to throw. Here, Shelly gets her on the ropes. Can she do damage where she wants her? Nope, Rodriguez gets out. The second round is coming, the fourth round is coming to a close here. Really, really close. Shelly Barnett using a little bit of the Pookaboo defense there, keeping her hands up, anticipating those long one-twos coming from, from Rodriguez. Rodriguez throws a lot of uppercut counters, which is very odd for the taller fighter, but it works for her. Shelly gets her on the ropes. Shelly going to the body, not really effective, but putting on the pressure. Nice uppercut counter for Rodriguez as she turns around. Really solid fight. Both fighters making adjustments. Both fighters showing us different things from round to round. Barnett bullies Rodriguez yet again on the ropes. It's a lot of pressure. It's surely counting on the judges' scorecards. But she's not necessarily landing a lot of punches. And you'll notice her jab isn't really vengeful. It's a more pushing jab, which might work for her as she tries to push Rodriguez into the ropes. She has her on the ropes now, landed a couple of body shots. Rodriguez lands one, two, one, two. Not a lot of mustard behind them, though. Nice right hand lands for Rodriguez. Nice! Uh, even better right hand lands for Shelly. Maybe the hardest punch of the fight. Uppercut lands for Shelly. She's really bullying her again. A lot of ebb and flow in this fight. One fighter finds success, makes an adjustment. The other fighter comes right back. Shelly really commanding this fifth round. Promotions presents Light Her Up 2. Jab lands for Shelly. Gets her right back on the ropes. Good pressure here for Shelly. Rodriguez going for that uppercut counter, but gets countered by her as a reaction from Shelly. Right hand lands. Oh, nice right hand lands for Shelly. Rodriguez more flailing than really putting her body behind these punches. I had her as the favorite coming into this fight, but Shelly Barnett is proving me wrong. Really, really showing grit in the ring. Taking on a longer, faster, younger opponent and really doing damage in the ring. Really bullying the bigger fighter. The crowd really rooting for the hometown girl, Shelly Barnett. She continues bullying, continues fighting on the inside, showing some head movement. Gets countered there by a left hook from Rodriguez. A feeling that Rodriguez really has to do something special here in this final round to get the W. Shelly having another solid round, blocking much of what's coming at her and responding with effective punches, dictating the pace. 
effective aggression. Really meeting all the criteria. Ring generalship. There we go. Six rounds in the books. Good fight. Shelly Barnett. Guadalupe Rodriguez. The women's bantamweight division. We're going to the judges' scorecards. I've got Shelly taking this fight at least four to two. Which will give her a score of 58 to 56. But I have a feeling the judges might have it wider than that. The crowd is definitely happy with Shelly Barnett's effort. Ladies and gentlemen, let us go to the judges' scorecards at the end of six rounds of action. Judge Kubatsky scores this contest 58-56 in favor of Barnett. Judge Dalida scores it 59-55 in favor of Rodriguez. And Judge Davis scores this matchup 57 57 this contest is a draw wow a shocking result here a draw shelly barnett on the first judge's scorecard was 58 to 56 my exact scorecard the second judge however had it 59 to 55 for rodriguez that means he had to score five to one very wide it's a draw ladies and gentlemen Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black with green tin. He's at the scale at 177.4 pounds. He has scored a victory in his only professional contest. Introducing the Matamoros Mexico, Fernando Rojo. light heavyweight action the undefeated Nick Van Tauzi 3-0 3 KOs big power takes on Fernando Galvan 1-0 coming from Mexico I gotta be real honest here Nick's got a huge crowd at the Danforth Music Hall and he packs big power I have a feeling he's gonna be looking for the knockout make this hometown crowd a happy one we're scheduled for four rounds Nick Fantazzi in the black and white trunks. Fernando Galvan in the black and green trunks. Nick carrying a pretty big height advantage. What well, looks like a pretty big reach advantage. Really feeling out Fernando here. Fernando keeps his chin straight up when he throws punches. It's not really advisable in the ring. Nick is probably going to expose that.
looks like looks like Nick Fantauzi is really trying to find the right hand. He hasn't thrown it yet, but you can tell that's what he's looking for. The jab is pawing. He probably seen that chin of Galvin up in the air. There's a counter left hook. Catches that chin. Would be nice to see Nick Fantauzi use his length. Really put up a nice jab. Galvin comes with double left hooks, lands the one upstairs. Nick there finally throws that right hand. Fernando Galvin really throwing with his authority, but oh, there's a left hook that lands for him. He hasn't really had found much success previous to that left hook. Goes for another left hook, misses wildly. Nick has to let his punches go. It is the first round. He'll probably show us more in the second round. But he's got a, an opponent in front of him who keeps his chin straight up in the air. He's got the length. He's got the reach. He's got to use it. There he goes for a left hook to the body. Not really what you want to do against a smaller fighter. We know Nick has three knockouts in his three victories. We know he has big power. He can s turn the fight around in any second. There's a one-two lands for Nick. There's a left hook lands for Nick. There's another right hand. Nick finds real success there at the end of the first round. Let's see here as we prepare for round two. Nick's body language much more assertive here in the second round. There's a nice right hand for Nick Fantauzi. Now he keeps more distance, uses better footwork. That's what he's got to do. He's got to keep him turning, find the one-two. Land that jab just like he did there. Whoa! Whoa! Hard left hook. Knocks down Nick Fantauzi. It didn't look like it really hurt him, but he landed it at the right time and he was off balance. There's a very big knockdown for Fernando Galvin. It's a four round fight. A knockdown wins you an entire round. He could find himself up 10 8. Lands another. Hard right hand there. Nick Fantauzi facing adversity here in the second round of four. We anticipated with the three knockouts that Nick would be the one coming in and showing us big power. But Fernando knocks, gets him, gets the knockdown here in the second round and really looking more confident. Nick goes for a right hand, misses. Fernando Galvan puts his head straight down like a bull, charges in and throws a hook to the body and a right hand, missing both. Huge round for Fernando Galvan here in the second round. We'll take it 10 to 8. The first round was close. Nick might be in a real hole here going into the third round. There's a nice right hand for Nick. You know, we got to see consistency out of Nick. We've got to see good one-twos, repeated one-twos, solid pace. There he's getting beat to the punch by Fernando Galvin. Goes to the body there. Nick straight head hunting, not showing us any body work. There's a jab that lands for him. Nick really not looking for anything but the one-two here. You know, maybe a jab to the body would 
pull down Fernando Galvin's guard. Then he can find the right hand. He's got to switch it up. Fernando Galvin can see those one-twos coming and knows how to react, knows how to get out the way. There, Fernando Galvin comes up to him, walking with his chin up and eats a punch for it. There's a right hand for Fernando Galvin. on the judges' scorecards for Fernando Galvin. He's got two more rounds for the big upset here at the Danforth Music Hall. Lee Baxter Promotions presents Light Him Up 2. Nick Fantauzi needs to show us a sense of urgency. There's a right hand to the body that lands. Oh, lands a right hand, but Fernando Galvin counters with some wide hooks that land. Those wide hooks are not really advisable. That's not what you should be throwing, but they are landing. Nick Fantauzi's defense really needs some improvement. There lands a nice left hook. Pushes. Fernando Galvin gets a warning for it. You can see Nick Fantauzi is getting a little bit angry in the ring, feeling that urgency, knowing that he needs to do something special to pull this one out. There he lands a nice left hook, does Fantauzi. Finding more success here in the third round. You'll notice Fernando Galvin does not like to throw first. There's a nice left, sorry, right hand for Nick Fantauzi. Galvin tries to reply, but doesn't really land anything effective there as he had Fantauzi on the ropes. Fantauzi having a better third round. Getting himself back into this fight. Body shot lands for Fernando Galvin. Galvin switches to southpaw and throws. Galvin staying in southpaw, trying to land that right hook. Good comeback round for Nick Fantauzi. Counterpunch lands for Fernando Galvin. Oh, jab lands for Fantauzi, but Galvin comes back with a left hook. Another left hook for Galvin. Oh, there's a nice one too for Nick Fantauzi. Looks for another right hand, but Galvin moves out the way and clinches effectively as he found his back on the ropes. Fantauzi looking for left hook, landing them. There we go, Fantauzi doing some damage. There's another strong right hand for Nick Fantauzi. Here we go, another right hand for Nick Fantauzi. As the third comes to a close, a great round from Nick Fantauzi. A great comeback round. The crowd is reacting. They're loving it. This fourth round is going to mean a lot. Perhaps the most important round in both men's careers. Nick Fantauzi was dropped in the second round. Found some success in the third round. The first round was close. This fight could be going either way, but I have it a draw right now. Two rounds to Nick Fantauzi. One round that counts as two rounds for Fernando Galvin with the knockdown. Big, big fourth round. Let's see the action. Left hook lands for Nick Fantauzi. Right hand lands for Nick Fantauzi. Growing with confidence. There's a nice left hook. His hands are down, though. He should keep them up. Fernando Galvin swings wildly. He can catch you if your hands are down because you won't see them coming. Oh, 
Donovan Boucher acts quick, quick to break up the clinch. Left hook to the body, Nick Fantauzi. Right hand to the body, Nick Fantauzi. Another right hand to the body, Nick Fantauzi. Finding a lot more success when he throws to the body. We mentioned it earlier. Now he switches to southpaw, but back to orthodox. Really good fourth round for Nick Fantauzi. Swings an overhand right, but misses. He's really neutralized Fernando Galvin well in the third and fourth. Fernando Galvin clinching a lot. He's probably feeling the pace here in the fourth round. A nice one-two lands for Nick Fantauzi. Landing his best punches of the fight here in the third round. Fourth round. We are in the final round, and it was an important one. Nick Fantauzi answered the call. He came out here aggressive, landing good punches. He wants to walk away with the victory. He knows how important this round is for his career. There's a nice body shot for Nick Fantauzi, followed by an uppercut. Another right hand for Nick Fantauzi, his best round by far in this fight. The crowd here at the Danforth Music Hall is really responding to Nick Fantauzi's effort. Misses with the right hand, but keeps the pressure on with that jab as Fernando Galvin has to clinch. We're almost finished in the fourth round. Ten seconds left. Right hand lands for Fernando Galvin. Oh, Nick Fantauzi off balance. We're going to go to the judges' scorecard. We're going to see how they have it. We've had a few questionable scorecards today, so who knows how this one will go. In a four rounds of action, here is the judge's decision. Judge Bender scores this contest 39-37 in favor of Fantasi. <laughs> Judge Kuchowski scores it 38-37 in favor of Galvan. <laughs> and Judge Davis scores it 38-37 for the winner by split decision, Nick Wow, Nick Fantauzi did enough in the third and fourth round to turn it around after that knockdown in the second. And advances to 4-0, three KOs, a victory over Fernando Galvan.
is a modified sound of the red corner. He's wearing blue with the white trim. He took the scale at 151.9 pounds. He has won his only professional contest by knockout. Introducing from La Risa, Greece, Yanis the Great Bout number two from the Danforth Music Hall, Lee Baxter Promotions presents Light 'em Up 2. Giannis Imperimpililis from Larissa, Greece, 1-0. Laurent White, 3-1 from Mississauga, Ontario. Here we go, four rounds of super welterweight action. Both fighters coming out fast, throwing pretty quick hands over here. Giannis only has one professional fight against a fighter who was also making his debut in Greece. He was victorious there. Laurent White has four professional fights, three of which he won, and one where he tasted defeat. That fight was actually up against Sakima Mullings, who's 25 and three, a really solid fighter, and not necessarily someone White should have been fighting in his third professional fight. And so, clearly a better fighter than his three and one record displays. Feeling out round here in the first round. Nice body shot there by Giannis. Backed into the ropes by Laurent. Donovan Boucher, our referee, breaks the action. Nice combo there by Giannis. Finding that left hook to the body, finding a home for it repeatedly here in the first round. Laurent, lead hand low, tries the jab. Fighters are tied up. Giannis looking for the counter. Lands a nice right hand. Laurent looking for some hard body punches there as they're tied up. Referee warns him to keep it up. Laurent White is throwing one, maybe two punches at a time. Giannis, you see three punch combinations. They're helping, there you go. There's some combinations. Lands that left hook upstairs. Another combination landing that right hand at the end. More combinations from Giannis, really staying busy here in the first round. More combinations with the uppercut landing. A right hand lands. Oh, Laurent White hits him in the back of the head. No warning from the referee. Action heats up here in the first round. Giannis lands a nice right hand again. Giannis, the Greek, finding success here in the first round. Warren there for hitting.
in the blue and white colors of his native Greece taking on Laron White in the white and gold. A good first round, good action. Giannis looked strong using his combinations. There's another combination landing the right hand at the end over the top. Giannis using his footwork effectively there, throwing left hooks as he moves away from White. White really needs to establish a jab here, see if that jab can help him land other punches following the jab. But you're not going to find a lot of luck against a guy with good footwork throwing one jab, throwing a right hand, and nothing following it. There's a body shot, lands for White. There's a jab followed by right hand from Giannis. White now looking more comfortable in the second round, maybe finding a home for his jab. Both fighters warned for hitting to the back of the head. They're wrestling a lot and they continue to throw punches. There's a nice body shot, left hook. Giannis really finding a home for that left hook all night here. White, both hands low, jumps in there, not even throwing a shot, head down. Not too difficult for Giannis to get out of the way there. Both fighters wrestling, grappling, throwing whatever loose arms they have. Another warning for the back of the head there. That's the third warning for White and the second for Giannis. If this continues, one of them will be deducted a point, surely. Giannis throwing three punches, only landing the jab there. White looking really hesitant, goes in there with a late thrown jab and gets countered by an uppercut. left hook both fighters landing there both fighters in the middle exchanging white thinks he found some success continues punching there's the first combination we've seen from him all fight body shot by white hard fought fight here second round of four Nice right hand counter by Giannis. Body shots by White. There was a nice right one there that landed. Both fighters looking a little bit weary here in the second round. Welterweight action. Right hand, left hook lands for Giannis. Fighters get tangled up once again. Donovan Boucher giving him apparently what is the last warning for hitting behind the head. He's really got to be careful here in the next two rounds. Left hook to the body for White. Warned for keeping it for hitting low there. Tough inside fighting here. Giannis thrown into the corner, grabs and turns him around, throws a right hand left hook to the body. Giannis showing really impressive footwork here. Real boxing IQ there, leaning on him, pushing him, not letting White get off. White looking frustrated, trying to punch through everything. He's got to find some space. He's got to stop smothering himself. He's got to throw some combinations. Oh, 
Heist right hand lands for Giannis as he has White backed into the ropes. Both fighters are tired. That's why you see a lot of holding right now. But they fight out of it. Giannis lands. Throws some soft body punches, but a hard right hand upstairs lands. White is clearly frustrated by the inside fighting here. But if he wants to change it, he's got to keep some distance and throw some punches. Giannis is clearly on the inside when he wants to be on the inside, and he's on the outside when he wants to be on the outside, dictating the action. Right hand lands for Giannis, followed by left hook. Left hook in return from White. Right hand lands for Giannis. This would be a really good victory for Giannis here in his second professional fight. Can he pull through here? White now fighting as a southpaw fighter. A little bit of a messy affair. A lot of holding, a lot of pushing, a lot of wrestling. Combinations thrown by Giannis. Nice right hand by Giannis as White misses, turns him around, lands another right hand over the top. Good action in the third round. Super Walter Wade fight. Round four of four. Both fighters go right into the clinch at the beginning of the round. There's been a lot of clinching in this fight. One, two for Giannis. White showing a lot more head movement here. We'll see if that's actually effective. Right hand for Giannis followed by a jab. There's White landing a jab, but followed by a left hook from Giannis. White missing with the right hand. Now in the orthodox stance once again. Throwing out that lead right hand jab. Nice action here. Both fighters picking up the stamina here in the last round. Nice one two lands for White through the guard of Giannis. Another right hand lands for White. Can he turn it around here in the last round? Goes to the body, left hook, shakes Giannis. He smells blood. Oh, nice right hand for Giannis. White found some success there. Can he follow up? This is the last round and he needs this round. A real sense of urgency here. Both fighters in the corner, clinching. Donovan Boucher breaks up the action. Both fighters in the middle of the ring. Nice uppercut, turns around. Giannis landing, punches. Good left hook there by White. Both fighters looking exhausted, but giving it their all here in the last fourth round. Giannis, jab, followed by a right hand over the top. He's finding a real home over the top there. Donovan Boucher breaking up the, uh, the clinches a lot more effectively here in the last round. He wants them to give it their all. Show us some action, right hand for Giannis. Uppercut for White, tries it again, tries it again. There's a right hand for White. Oh, nice combination for Giannis in the center of the ring. Nice right hand for White. Another right hand for Giannis. Back and forth action. White definitely having a better round here in the fourth. Here we go, the last 10 seconds. 
solid fight. Uppercuts for Giannis. A real good fight here at the Danforth Music Hall. Lee Baxter Promotions light him up to super welterweight action. One judge has it a draw. Davis and Delita both scored 39 to 37. Both in favor of the winner by majority decision. Yanis the Great. Giannis takes the W. Here we go. Six rounds of action in the welterweight division. Petros Ananyan taking on Abraham Gomez. Petros Ananyan enters the ring as the heavy favorite, the current IBF International Super Lightweight Champion. 12 0, undefeated, five knockouts. Abraham Gomez comes to the ring 28 and 15. But he's faced a lot of good fighters. You know, Joel Diaz, AJ Banal, Roberto Ortiz, Ricardo Mahares, Gamaliel Diaz, Marco Antonio Lopez. A uh, few of those have become world champions. And so he's definitely been in there and mixed it up. Hasn't really had any big wins in his career. But while you would expect Petros to come into the ring really uh, looking to secure a good win here. Maybe he sees this as a fighter that might not be on his level, but the pressure is on him. He's got six rounds to stop this guy. He's got six rounds to look really good. Anything other than that is a failure, even if he ends up with the victory. He's already looking really sharp here, already dominating the action, landing at will, keeping a good distance. There's a nice one too, real sharp. Very precise punching. Nice jab. 
Oh, nice right hand by Petros. And then Yen having a dominant first round here so far. Nice left hook. And Gomez is down already with the left hook. Looks like he might even be counted out. Will he get up? Eight, nine, ten. The fight is over. We said Anandian needs to look good against an opponent like Abraham Gomez. And he looked spectacular. Abraham Gomez bleeding profusely. That was a hard, hard shot. He did not get up because he didn't want to. He did not get up because he could not. His professional record shows eight victories, seven of those coming by way of knockout and two defeats. Introducing from Burlington, Ontario, Jeff the Trouble. Across the ring, his opponent fights out of the red corner, wears white with gold trim, his official weight. 145.8 pounds. This professional record stands at a perfect 10 victories. Five coming by way of knockouts in 10 bouts. Introducing from Toronto, Ontario, he is the reigning, defending, and undefeated NABA welterweight champion of Canada, Sugar King.
Here we go, tonight's main event for the WBA and ABA Welterweight Championship. We've got eight rounds of action. The Danforth Music Hall is going crazy. The crowd really expecting a great fight here. We've got Kane Heron, the defending champion, undefeated, 10-0, five KOs. We've got the challenger, Jeff the Trouble One Tabrizi, eight and two, seven KOs. That's a lot of power on Jeff Tabrizi's side. Can he make it count? Here we go, first round. Jeff Tabrizi has two losses on his record, but they were the first two professional fights he had. Since then, he's won eight in a row. Ken Heron, as we mentioned, undefeated and has really dominated everyone he's fought so far. His last win was against Dwayne Durrell, where he took almost every round in that eight round fight to become the WBA and ABA welterweight champion. Ken Heron lands a nice right hand to the body. Kane's got a, a few different looks. He can fight from distance, he can fight on the inside. He doesn't smother himself. He's got good reflexes, good defense. He's one of Toronto's best prospects. Lee Baxter feels like he has what it takes to make an impact on the world stage. He's got to win these fights to get there. Nice jab to the body by Kane. Jeff with a wild right hand, misses. You can kind of see the skill. Oh, nice right hand by Jeff Tabrizi as they were clinched. Kane was not expecting it, but he respects it. Oh, nice left hook by Tabrizi. He swings wildly. But when he lands, they make an impact. We said he has seven KOs in eight victories. A nice right hand by Heron. This fight is warming up nicely in the first round. Tabrizi missing wildly yet again. Kane goes to the body. Kane jabs upstairs, backs up effectively. Tabrizi counter right hand. He is all over the place, but it is an unorthodox approach. Something Ken Heron hasn't seen before and it's catching him by surprise. While Kane has looked more composed in this round, Jeff has landed the harder punches and that counts for something on the judges' scorecards. Kane Heron, the champion, needs to remain composed and not let Jeff get him with those wild attacks. There goes Jeff Tabrizi. WBA and ABA welterweight title. Nice jab by Kane. Ooh, Jeff Tabrizi lands a nice right hand.
Jeff Tabrizi punching, although the referee did not say stop. He should stay stop. If Tabrizi cannot hear you, how is he supposed to know that he's not allowed to punch? Nice body shot by Ken Heron. He keeps going to the body, relentless. Will he wear down Jeff Tabrizi, who's got a lot of energy and uses that energy in wild swinging attacks that have caught Ken Heron? They are unorthodox. They come from weird angles. Throws a right hand, ties up Ken Heron. Ken realizing that this is going to be a tougher fight. He might be the more skillful fighter. But skill is not the only thing that matters in the ring. Although we cannot compare the level, you know, Jeff Tabrizi throws those wild power shots a lot like Marcos Maidana. Ken Heron finds the body, goes upstairs as Jeff Tabrizi ducks under. Jeff Tabrizi really, really rough in the ring, using everything he can. Nice right hand by Tabrizi. Ken Heron is really looking flustered in there. He's finding some success, but I don't think that he expected Jeff Tabrizi to be this tough in the opening two rounds. There he lands a nice combination and ends it with a left hook. All those punches landed. Good action. Ken Heron has to stay busy when he's wrapped up. He cannot just think that Jeff Tabrizi will not throw a punch. There he lands a right hand. Ken Heron switches to an orthodox, a southpaw stance rather, excuse me. Nice left hook there as he switches back to orthodox. Back into the southpaw, looks for the right hook, left straight. Oh, turns him around, lands another hook. He's finding success with the southpaw stance. Ken Aaron having the most success he's had in this fight at the end of the second round. Nice body shot. The southpaw stance is really working. Nice jabs by Ken Heron, lands three in a row there, then jabs to the body, left hook goes to the body. Ken fighting with more confidence, using his footwork more effectively, not getting tied up so far this round. Now he's tied up and Jeff Tabrizi tries to throw as he's tied up and he avoids it. That's exactly what he needs to do. He now knows that Jeff Tabrizi is looking for those punches while they're clinching. Now he switches to the southpaw stance. He had a lot of success with it in the second round. Nice body shot by Shane. Oh, Jeff Tabrizi lands a nice counter left hook. Misses an overhand right, does Tabrizi. Nice right hand lands for Ken Heron. Then he throws the right to the body. Right upstairs, right upstairs again. And a left hook to finish off that beautiful combination. 
Oh, nice jab counter by Jeff Tabrizi. But Ken Heron is commanding this round. He's rolling better with those punches, avoiding Jeff Tabrizi's wild swings. Jeff now resorting to the jab, trying to find a more calculated approach as Ken Heron has found the adjustments to his unorthodox stance. There's a nice right hand for Ken Heron. There's another right hand as he continues to pummel him. Nice right hand to the body. The right hand is landing at will. Right hand upstairs, another right hand. The referee might stop it. Oh, Jeff clinches. Oh, that was a wise, wise time to clinch. He looks tired. He looks a little bit hurt. Can Ken Heron end this in the third round? Ken remains in his softball stance. There he lands a nice combination with a good, well-timed body shot. Another body shot, then goes upstairs. Ken Heron showing why he is the WBA and ABA Walter Wade champion. After a difficult first round, he's come out and shown a lot of adjustments in the second and third. Nice right hand lands for Jeff Tabrizi. He needs more of those. Nice right hand for Tabrizi, but Ken Heron with the counter shots. Oh, there was a headbutt. Jeff Tabrizi with the headbutt and gets a warning right away. Good catch by the referee. That was clearly intentional and does not belong in the ring. Really intimate, a great crowd, sold out. Here we go. Can Ken Heron continue to find success here? We're almost halfway through this fight, and it's flown by because we've seen some great action. Ken Heron opens this round in the southpaw stance where he's found a lot of success. Goes to the body. Goes to the body again switches back to the orthodox stance. Nice uppercut left hook combo. Throws a right hand to the body. Jeff Tabrizi has no answer for what's in front of him. It seems like Jeff Tabrizi caught Ken Heron by surprise in that first round. But since, maybe it's his corner or maybe it's his instincts, but he's figured it out. He's solved the problem in front of him. Nice combination, another combination, letting it go. Punches in bunches for Ken Heron. Now Jeff gets him on the corner, can he do any damage? Nice slip there by Heron to get out the way. He's still on the corner, he feels comfortable there. Nice, nice one two by Ken Heron. Really pouring it on the challenger. Jeff Tabrizi is starting to look tired. Nice, nice punches by Kane. He's landing, he's landing at will. He thinks there might be a stoppage here. He's got time. We're almost on the fourth round, but he's got four more rounds to go. A KO here would be a big result for Kane Heron. A nice right hand lands, followed by a jab. Goes upstairs, goes downstairs.
Ken really showing a lot of skill in there. He's slipping punches. He's countering punches. He's throwing first. He's going upstairs. He's going downstairs. He's throwing combinations. Really showing a diverse set of skills here. Mixing up effectively the offense and the defense. Nice left hook, right hand to the body. Switches back to the south pastas. Does the champion, Ken Heron. Jeff Tabrizi not really landing any punches here in this round. Kane dominating the action in control. We are done the fourth round. We got four more to go. Walterway champion, Jeff Tabrizi, the challenger. After a good first round for Jeff Tabrizi, Kane Heron has really adjusted well and taken the next three rounds. Now Jeff goes for a wild attack and finds some success. Lands some downstairs, continues. Jeff Tabrizi really coming out strong here in this fifth round. He knows the tides have turned on him. He knows he's got to make a change. He's throwing the jab much more precisely. Kane trying to figure out how he's going to counter this newfound aggression in the fifth round. Nice left hook counter by Kenyon Heron. Nice jab, right hand, left hooks. Jeff Tabrizi swings a wild right hand, squares up with his terrible footwork, and gets countered for it by Ken Heron. He made a miss, and he made him pay. Nice uppercut, followed by a right hand for Ken Heron. Goes downstairs, goes upstairs. Nice right hand for Jeff Tabrizi over the top. Kane Heron doesn't look affected. Turns him around. He can punch him. There you go. Throws to the body. Goes upstairs. Jeff Tabrizi cannot keep up the space. Here we go. Nice body shots. Jeff Tabrizi goes for the clinch. I have no idea why Kane Heron throws up there. Could have dished out some real damage as he had Jeff Tabrizi just completely frozen on the ropes. Nice right hand, uppercut, right hand for Ken Heron. Jeff Tabrizi misses that left hook. Nice body shots, uppercut. Ken Heron really showing why he's the champion tonight. Nice right hand. Jeff Tabrizi tries to answer back, either gets smothered or misses. Last 10 seconds of the fifth round.
and we're definitely not getting a bad fight here in the main event. Ken Heron starts the round, pawing the jab, judging his distance. Nice counter right hand by Jeff Tabrizi. Doesn't land too hard, but did land. Nice left hook by Jeff Tabrizi. Beautiful three jabs in a row by Ken Heron, all land. The first one, particularly a snappy jab. There's more snappy jabs. Left hook, Tabrizi. Tabrizi finding a home for the left hook here in this round. Body shot for Ken Heron. Jab by Ken Heron. Ken's showing us jabs, left hooks, showing us body shots, uppercuts, orthodox stance, southpaw stance. He's really shown it all here. Great defense, great footwork, nullifying Tabrizi here. Body shot in response. Head movement, Ken Heron looking for the opening. Jeff Tabrizi warned for rabbit punching there, punching to the back of the head. Kane's really got a solid jab and knows how to turn that jab into a potential left hook when the opportunity is there, just with a flick of the wrist. Switches to the southpaw stance. We are six rounds in, two more to go. WBA and ABA welterweight title. The defending champion lands some hard punches. Hard punches and keeps going to the body. Another hard uppercut right hand. I'll tell you, Jeff tabrizi has got a chin. Real solid chin. He's taken some bombs here in these six rounds and has not really looked badly hurt. Five rounds to one for the defending champion. And you know, the judges might even have it 6-0 because that was a close first round, although I do believe Tabrizi won it decisively with those hard right hands that he landed. There goes Tabrizi with the left hook right hand combination. He knows he's losing this fight. He is giving it his all. Can he overcome the talent and skill of Ken Heron here in these last two rounds? He needs a knockout. Can he deliver? <laughs> nice jab by Ken Heron.
Body shot for Ken Harry. They fight on the inside. Ken Heron gets the better of that exchange. Ken goes to the body. He was trying to find some punches landing upstairs, but Jeff Tabrizi's nice defense was tight enough to avoid those punches. Can Tabrizi show us something different? Can he catch Ken Heron by surprise? In the seventh round, there's a right hand. Ken Heron, although still looking like the better fighter here, is starting to look a little bit tired. Oh, there's some nice punches in the southpaw stance. Maybe he heard me. As soon as I said he's tired, he's doing nothing but throwing punches. There we go. Real low punch there by Tabrizi. The ref did not see it. Body shot by Ken Heron. You can see the way that Ken Heron moves his body into the punches. There's torque there. Jeff Tabrizi is doing nothing but throwing arm punches. We know he's got power, but he's not putting the power behind his shots. As we approach the end of the seventh round, we will have one more round for the WBA and ABA welterweight title. stoppage to become the WBA and ABA welterweight champion. Defending champion Ken Heron is in the black, gold, and white trunks. The challenger Jeff Tabrizi, the trouble one, is in the silver and black. Last round of action at the Danforth Music Hall. Ken Heron starts this round in the orthodox stance. We've seen him switch multiple times throughout this fight. Initially, he was not finding success as an orthodox fighter, did find it as a southpaw, and now is finding it in both positions. Ken Heron does not need a knockout here. He needs a victory. He needs to get through this round, wrap that title around his waist, and look for bigger and better fights for the Toronto boxing community. Jeff Tabrizi needs the knockout. He needs to show us everything he's got here in this final round. Oh, beautiful right hand lands for Ken Heron. Jeff Tabrizi, chin made of steel. Jeff Tabrizi trying to fight on the inside, but Ken Heron is a better inside fighter. He lands those sneaky left hooks on the inside. There he goes, left hook downstairs, then upstairs. Ties up Jeff Tabrizi. We get a break in the action. Nice right hand, another right hand. Right hand to the body, left hook upstairs, followed by a jab. Ken Heron shutting down Jeff Tabrizi in this eighth and final round for the WBA and NBA welterweight title. He's got him on the corner. Lands a right, nice right hand. He's got him on the ropes near the corner. Oh, a body shot landed for Ken Heron. The ref broke it up. He doesn't even say why. If it was a low blow, he should tell him. If it was not a low blow, he should not have broke up the action there. Oh, beautiful, beautiful combinations for Ken Heron. Nice right hand for Ken Heron. We are nearing a close to the eighth and final round of our main event. Great action here tonight. All six fights delivering.
body shot, Ken Heron. Upstairs, right hand, Ken Heron. 10 seconds remaining. Ken Heron will successfully defend his WBA and NBA welterweight title. We will go to the judges' scorecard. My unofficial scorecard is 79-71. Let's see how the judges have it. In action, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge Davis scores this contest 80-72. Judges Hayes and Dalita both scored 79-73. All in favor of the winner by unanimous decision. And still, NABA local champion of Canada, Sugar King!